Hey, what's going on everybody? Servo here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to teach you how to find and defeat Ore Slime. Or, I, I could be butchering it, but I think that's how it's pronounced. Either way, it is a, this boss right here. Again, I think it's German. I think it's like Ore Slime. We're pretty close enough. It's a giant slime monster, okay? Now, I didn't know what this exactly was or what it really meant. So I did do a quick little Google search just to give me a vague idea. And apparently Ore Slime refers to like an ancient basic substance that scientists believe life first emerged from on Earth. So imagine a thick like soupy mixture of simple chemicals in the early oceans billions of years ago so ultimately it's pretty much a, a gross slime that created everything so there we go i'm pretty sure that's the connection they were going there and it does make sense for a core keeper but very very cool now this enemy is actually like the last enemy you defeat and i'm here to make this guide for you because i don't want you to make the mistake i made of going in there super unprepared not knowing what to do the developers of core keeper were so freaking generous to actually give me early access to the one 1.0 version of the game they didn't give us much help didn't give me guides or anything like that had to figure out everything on my own but it was super fun and i'm here to pass on what i have found in my past like 10 hours of playing the new update so you can make it a lot easier and be prepared. Now this video is not going to tell you the best way how to defeat this, the best armor or anything like that. I will have guides for that stuff coming up soon, but it is going to tell you how to defeat this boss. And you want to defeat it because there's some pretty awesome rewards. Now if you guys do enjoy any of my content at all, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to show you a pretty easy way to defeat the boss. And then at the end, I'm going to roll the clip of me just defeating it pretty much like under leveled with weapons and just a method that was not very practical this boss is so unique though make sure you stick around so up first what you have to do is find the boss so what i have determined based on my map here and this tracker here is or slime pretty much is like a norm the devourer kind of goes around the entire map literally all the biomes he's on the outer edge of all the biomes in a circle and then beyond this circle is a wall that you cannot like penetrate you can't break through that's the end of core keeper i'm assuming until we get some extra content so it is pretty much a giant gorm the devourer path so this is something you really need to know because defeating him is going to require you to know the layout of his biome so keep that in mind you can pretty much go in any direction as you see i had the beginner ones we have gorm the devourer's path right here and then we go up Azios, and then the sunken sea area and then shimmering frontiers mold fortress all that and then we have this one so let's head up there and i can show you what i'm talking about now when you get here i recommend you just take a look around in the biome i will have a full guide on this biome but i'm going to give you the the long and short and if you want to skip straight to the boss fight and mechanics i'm leaving them in chapters down below so you can just skip ahead but if you are you know new to all this and you want to learn something uh stick around so these little monsters here they are not too strong i'm obviously pretty overpowered right now but they're really not that tough and another thing you get those little mobs but you're also going to encounter this guy i knew he was going to pop up every time i teleport to this biome you see these they pop up quite often but after you kill a couple of them they don't seem to spawn anymore so let me go ahead and defeat this and he's gone pick up his loot get these little guys real quick and defeat them now, before you fight the boss, what I recommend you do is find one of these little obelisk right here. So this is actually gonna allow you to get some different loot if you want. I defeated him before crafting anything out of here. But the two things you do need to craft out of here is you have the primeval slime cell right here. This is going to allow you to summon this boss after you defeat him. So keep that in, uh, uh, keep that in mind, you need a uh, cytoplasm for that and ancient gemstones and then this is going to create the scanner for or slime here so you know what that does if you got to this point you know it only takes 20 cytoplasm there and how do you get that it's just from killing those two mobs that i just uh defeated on the screen here so we have 12 already I had none before I just started, so just those few enemies got me 12. So get up here, find one of these locations. Now, how do you find this? It's really easy. Again, this is like Gorm's path. So I actually came up from here, right? 
and then I got to here and I made my way all the way through this little path without breaking any rocks and I gotta say I don't know if you really can break any walls. So I have this new item right here called the Stormbringer. It's a level 19. It has plus 1000 mining damage. And I've came up here with 1100 mining damage. I'm not saying it's impossible to break these walls, but as you see, even with that, it is just not enough unless you get these little explosives like this that actually end up dropping from enemies. You can place them down and then go boom. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're navigating here so the objective of this boss fight is mobility you are going to be moving he is literally a giant wall and he's going to have three eyes that you need to shoot so i'm going to throw up some footage on screen so you can see what i'm talking about as i'm talking about it he's got three eyes that you're going to have to damage he is constantly moving along this path he is as wide as the path so if you get stuck just one time you get caught on a rock you get caught on a wall you are done for you will instantly die no matter what armor that you have on or at least that's what uh, i have found out so far so i'm going to defeat at this boss in front of you so you can see how to do it now what i'm going to use is a easier build i'm actually using the Stormbringer. like i said it's level 19 it's not that hard to get really so you can come up here and craft it from one of these structures it takes 100 pandorium bars which is the new thing we just got 100 solarite I'm sure you know how to get that shimmering a fortress a the cytoplasm and then you need the obliteration ray this will get rid of your obliteration ray but it's going to transform it into a stormbringer now stormbringer is so much better than obliteration ray because you have infinite this is literally infinite so it's going to make fighting this boss easier now, if you don't have one of those rays and you're going to fight the boss, I recommend you use Phantom Spark. I tried a combination of so many different things, even the new magic, and it seemed like Phantom Spark was the best. Get yourself like kind of a range build. The armor set I've been using is the Godsent King armor, and I'm also using the Azios Dash Feather. You can upgrade some stuff. I used Amaroth's Rings and then the Atlantean Worm Necklace. Now, again, I also defeated this boss without using the new three, um, like, souls that you can end up getting. I will have a guide on that as well. So you probably want to do that first if you haven't already, just to get the extra buffs. So if you go over here, you have three new souls. You're going to get the soul of Druid Dread, which will give you plus 10% health. The soul of Krydra, which will give you plus 10% armor. And the soul of Pyra, which is going to give you plus 10% damage. Those will obviously help you out in this fight, but it's not necessary. You don't absolutely have to. So I do recommend you have a strong DPS weapon, such as like the axe. You can craft the Pandorium one here or something else. Just level up your gear as much as you can. And then definitely the Phantom Spark. So let's go ahead and fight this boss. He should be coming around in a little bit. As you see, he was down here going this way. And then now he's over here. So the biggest tip by far to defeat this boss is to go up here and make a long range. This is going to be a pretty long fight, depending on how much damage you can do. Map out a big portion of the area so you can tell where you're at within the fight. So up here at the top right of my screen with the mini map, you are going to need to pay attention to that to actually end up like navigating because you're going to be walking backwards this entire fight. So you're going to have to go up like this or go down like this just to uh, avoid being uh, ran over by the boss. Now, all these little green like coral things right here, these are what you use to get the new material to craft some of this stuff. So you have the Pandorium Aura. It is all over this place. You are not going to struggle finding it at all. I can use, I have my Soul Seeker pickaxe. That's what I was using at first. So you can use it to break and take it back and just smelt it down like you would anything else. So the boss is coming up here really quickly. Let me go ahead and get over there. As for foods, I'm not really using anything. I have a thing that just increases my speed. It's just whatever I already had on me. Obviously, you guys will be able to put together a better build. Um, yeah, so let's just uh, get on over there. That way we can start fighting him. All right, our screen is starting to shake. I'm right about here. Just so you can pay attention to how far this fight's going to take us. And again, pay attention to your mini map at all times. You can apply your buffs if you want. And um, yeah, here we go. So he's going to be this giant wall like this. 
And so you just have to attack the three eyes. So um, again, while you're doing some damage, you can also pay attention to that mini map. And we're doing some pretty decent damage. His eyes actually have quite a bit of health. This thing is just really dang good, especially with all the other Titan buffs that I have. So we defeat him. As you see, I just got stuck right there. That could have been the end for me. If he ends up touching me, I could be gone. So always play it safe and keep, um, keep your distance if you can. So you can just use this thing if you want. But I originally was using the Phantom Spark. As you see, the Phantom Spark is actually really, really good. So this is definitely an option. Now, again, on my mini map, I'm in this small area. I didn't leave myself much room, so just be careful. And as I'm going into a dark zone, I'm unveiling more of the map. That's not a good sign. I don't want to be in an area I haven't revealed. That's why you always want to reveal the area first. That way, you know where to back up to. So we're going to go ahead and finish shooting this eye. And then I'll just uh, switch over to the Stormbringer right here. So let's go ahead and finish this one what's nice is it kind of locks on so then he's going to stop you can do like a rage potion and then get out your melee thing and then you just want to um attack right here so do as much damage i've noticed you can't just like beat him in one whack it almost feels like it stops like once you do enough damage it'll stop completely and then you have to go and do it again so that's pretty much it you just repeat the entire process over and over Obviously, this little ray will be easy to defeat those bosses. So I do recommend, if possible, to get this weapon here. It's just going to be so much easier than the way I was doing it at first. So let's go ahead and defeat that one. Let's get this one over here. And this armor set is great, too, because you can sit there and dash like this. Pay attention to the mini-map. As you see, I'm running into a wall, so I'm going to go back down. We're just going to play it safe. Stay in the back. Get this one. And uh, start whacking him again. There we go. The pets don't seem to actually be damaging them, unfortunately. All right, so about two more times. It seems like there's four phases to this. All right, we got that one. Um, that was the bottom one. Okay, so we're gonna go up here to the middle one. Here's the other two. Oh, see, I got stuck on, so literally something as simple as getting stuck on that coral can literally ruin your run and then you'll have to restart all the way over. Okay, let's finish. Uh, no, you will have one more run after this. So let's go ahead and get this. Do to do. All right. Now we just got one more try. I know I'm making this look kind of easy, but your first few times don't feel discouraged if you don't win against them because it's definitely challenging. It took me three times originally to defeat him. As you see, it seems like he's starting to speed up as we're actually um, progressing now. All right, let's get that. Oh, we got caught. Oh, right here, right here. See, right there. That's some simple mistake that you can make if you're not paying attention to the mini map. I got a little too greedy there, so I was paying too much attention to the boss and not to my mini map. That's why I say it's very important to pay attention to the mini map. So let's go ahead and give it another try real quick. Alrighty, here we go. We're on our last phase again. Turns out, yeah, the boss does not um, keep his damage. He does fully regenerate, and I, I teleported back pretty quickly. So obviously here on his fourth phase, his last turn, he's much faster. So this is where you really have to pay attention to your mini-map. Uh, we're coming up on something here, so I'm going to dash out of the way, work on the middle one now. We have another thing here. I'm going to get up out of the way. And you do want to leave yourself some leeway because literally, like I said, getting stuck on one piece of coral can really determine whether you live or you're you're just done for at this point so let's work on this bottom one here we're moving into an area that has a couple of gaps so i just want to be mindful of that and then this part right here is what really gets you is when you get across like one of those huge walls get through here all right we should be coming up on some open spaces and we'll get this top one Woo! Oh, big wall again going down. And then going up. So again, playing it safe. It's not really a boss that's like timed right now. So we're going to go up through here. Getting into a little rocky area. Okay, dash out of there. Kind of out in the open again. Get this final one. It's like he's a uh, it's like he gets really tanky here too. Okay, we're gonna go work on this one down here. Dodge that one. 
Get over here. Some of the mobs will come, but they're really not too bad. And then we're just going to hopefully finish them off here. I'm going to switch to my axe, my melee weapon. And we should be able to get them here. There we go. And that's it. That's how you defeat the boss. Hopefully we get some good loot. Going to pick up all the stuff here. You'll get his chest, of course. And you get one of these. So it's the uh, giant mitochondrion. It's going to give you plus 100% max health only once. So I already had it. So I'm just going to use it for decorations. We got desert ruby. More of this plasm. I got the soul fossil boots here. I'm actually happy about this because my first time I defeated this boss, I got three of the soul fossil helmets. So it's my first time actually getting the pants. And here's what it looks like. It's more of like explosive damage, it looks like. And a three set deals 74 damage to all nearby enemies when you take damage. So we're going to grab that. I also got calcified shell, which is nothing special. And then, of course, you can take the chest here. So let me go ahead and pick that up. I'm going to go over here and deposit uh, my ores so I can have that smelting. Let's go ahead and grab some. I like to get about 100 on me. And then we're going to teleport back up there. Now, thankfully, when he's moving through here, he's not going to break those, but the smaller mobs can. So I actually had two up here. And it's a good thing I did because one of mine got um, broken, actually. So always keep some extra teleporters up here if you actually can. So I have this one here. I had one right down here. All right. So then you can go over here and you can craft more stuff. You can get the Chaos Staff, which I have not used yet. You can craft the Pandorium Armor Set right here. And then if you want to spawn him again, you literally just buy one of these slime cells for 40 of the uh, cytoplasm and 30 ancient gemstones. And when you get it, you just activate it like you would one of these recall aisles. You can do it anywhere. Keep in mind, once you spawn him in, you activate it. He's going to spawn just over here off your screen. So he's going to be very close. So I would recommend it kind of like how I have my tunnel system here. And eventually you'll have the whole thing uncovered. But if you find a spot that doesn't have a lot of like rocks like this where you can get really caught up like that's not a good spot i have to like navigate through here and then through here if you could spawn him like for me i would probably spawn him in this area that way i have this nice big open stretch that doesn't have many of these rocks that would be best so just be uh, be careful where you actually spawn them but that's pretty much it for this video i'll go ahead and roll the clip of when i did it my very first time unprepared and i didn't really have a lot of the stuff i didn't have all this extra boost i didn't even really pay attention to these this is whatever i had it on from a long time ago and i definitely did not have these souls here so it can be done and uh i know you guys can do it just take your time with it be careful but you got this i hope you guys have a really wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one and...